realize one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. And here's your host. Miss Kim Robinson.
abominable testimony on tonight. But before we get started, we always give shots out, give honor where honor is due, and want to give a shout out to Miss Kimmy Robinson, the owner and the founder of Elation Radio. We thank you for this opportunity to be before our listeners so we can talk about real issues. Also to Mr. Calvin Logan of the Logan Power Show, thank you for the connection and thank you just for being kingdom-minded and doing the will of God. Um, You guys, I'm excited, just happy in the Lord, excited about this 2019 because God is definitely blowing our minds and doing some phenomenal things. In the believers' lives, this is the year of manifest where we are becoming the head and not the tail. Hallelujah. We are above and not beneath. Thank you, Jesus. But I'm not on here to preach tonight. (laughs) I am just here to lift up the name of Jesus and encourage your heart. So as we begin, Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you have done and what you are doing in the lives of your people. God, we just ask tonight, God, that you just move me out of the way, God, and just have your way. God, say that something that is said tonight will uplift the hearts and minds of your people, God. And God, we just praise you. God, we just give you glory. And God, we give you honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Again, like I said, um, definitely have a phenomenal guest on tonight that will be sharing his testimony. Uh, We've been talking about the transforming power of God, and um, I I don't want to give too much away, but I definitely want you to know that regardless of where you may be um, or what you may be going through, God is able to make what you're going through, a testimony to someone else, someone else, someone else. So, you know, without further ado, um, you guys, I just wanted to introduce you um, not only to our special guest tonight, but also want to talk about our um, topic uh, in our series that we're actually going to be doing on tonight. Hey, with the Uplifter with Mo Show, we're actually doing a brand new segment and it's called Beyond the Bars, My Voice Matters. And on this segment, what we're doing, we actually have a special guest in the studio on tonight. Special guest, just say hi. Hello, everyone. I know you guys are wondering who that, that young man is, but he, his name is Samuel, Samuel Barber, and he is going to be our special guest tonight talking about our topic, Beyond the Bars, My Voice Matters. And Sammy, I call him Sammy, you guys. That's what I so, Sammy, can you let the listeners know who you are and give us just a little background information about yourself? Yes. Um, first and foremost, I would like to thank you for taking, allowing me this opportunity on your show. Um, I would also like to thank each and every listener that's tuned in. Um, a little bit about myself, when I wake up each and every day, um, I ask myself, how can I be a positive impact in other people's lives? Um, I, would, I would describe myself as a visionary, someone that's humble, compassionate, and strong-willed. Um, truly, I focus so much on others, it's kind of difficult to describe myself. That compassion, um, I got that from my grandmother to help others. I grew up in uh, Fort Mill, South Carolina. I was raised by a single parent and my grandparents in the project. And like any other projects across America, you know, there are subtle, inevitable traps that's laid out for our youth. And that's no coincidence why they call it a trap. Um, May 2005, at the age of 16, I was arrested with three co defendants in a, in a drug related robbery where one guy was wounded and sadly another one dying on the way to the hospital from being shot. And uh, I took a jury trial and was later found guilty and sentenced to 55 years. And uh, thank God, 11 years later, two years, two, two of my co-defendants have now came forward with the truth about what happened and recanted their testimony, which I'm currently under appeal seeking a new trial as we speak. Wow. That is definitely a, a testimony, Samuel. And this kind of um, flows into our segment, Beyond the Bars, um, because 
Samuel is actually in prison. Samuel, where are you located in um, in prison at right now? I'm calling to connect from McCormick, South Carolina. He's in McCormick, South Carolina. And we wanted to do this, this segment for to let our listeners know, regardless of where you may be at in life, your voice still matters. And, um, Sammy, first of all, thank you for sharing your testimony um, of what kind of happened to you and, you know, what kind of uh, went on in order to put you where you are right now. Um, but one thing that I want to say about this young man, um, when his mother introduced me to him and I heard him speak, I was just like blown away by the knowledge and just the his words and how he flows and it was just it was just like mind blowing just to hear him. So we wanted to give him this platform on this on tonight to talk to our listeners not only about his journey and not only about what he's done to um have him behind bars, but how he has overcome and what he is doing to overcome. So First of all, Sammy, let, let's get back to this sentencing thing. So you were told that you had 55 years in prison. That's what the sentence was, right? Yes, ma'am. All right. So what was going on in your mind uh, when you heard that sentence? Um, the spirit was telling me to be still, um, that I have some time, that I have to go and refine myself. You know, I was, I was 16 years of age, but I was still a child, and, and um, I just put my focus on God and let, allow God to, to lead me and not astray. I like that. And you talked about refining yourself. Um, tell me some ways that you have found, have, you were able to refine yourself while being locked up and having that sentence of 55 years on just lingering in the air? Um, well, first and foremost, you know, my relationship with God and, and knowing that and staying focused, you know, and not allowing negative influences to chart me off the course or my course that the life my life has been on. Secondly, um, my grandmother, you know, Miss right. Laura Turner, this lady here, you know, she's been my feed, you know, to excel and, and, and through her and my family, the love and support has really kept me motivated, you know, and focused on what matters. Family. Good. So faith and family has been your your number one tool that you've been able to use to stay focused and to stay positive, correct? Yes, ma'am. And you know, it's so funny you said that. Um, actually, I think it was last week, I actually did a poll to some of the viewers um, asking them how do they stay um, encouraged when it seems like everything around them is telling them to give up, to lose faith. And the number two the number um, two things was faith and family. So just to let our viewers know, regardless of what you may be going through, faith and family are the number one things that can truly help you get out of any situation and also to remain positive and have a positive attitude. So you talked a little bit about your grandmother. So tell us a little bit about your grandmother and why she's been such a big motivator for you. Oh, my God. <laughs> Man, um, since early on in my life, you know, my grandmother has, has she's been an inspiration and a motivation and a major driving force because she understands and she listens, mm. you know, and, um, just coming up young, being, you know, born and from a single-parent mother at, at such a young age, you know, my grandmother was practically my mother. She, wow. she was raising me and also my mother simultaneously. Mm -hmm. And she she just been there understanding and not judgmental and has been with me every step of the way throughout this incarceration and has not gave up. You know, she, she's uh, battling cancer right now. So y'all keep her in your prayers and, and as a battle of counsel, she's still holding on strong. So mm. I thank God for that. You know. Amen. That's awesome. And we definitely would be keeping her in our prayers because we definitely know that God is a healer and that God can deliver her even from cancer. So thank you. Your grandmother sounds like a very special woman and has been a real um, instrumental part of your life. So 
Sammy, we first of all, I um I'm just excited about this interview tonight. Um, because just just being honest with you, I, I am definitely a woman of faith. Um, but I would probably be freaking out <laughs> if I was given a sentence of fifty five years, but just to hear your level of of faith and your level of just being able to remain positive is just is mind blowing. It really is mind blowing and I, I just know that this can also be a good encouragement to other other listeners to let them know regardless of what they're going through, especially it may not be even as serious as what you had to go through, but it's possible for them to continue to have a positive attitude even in their darkest hours. So I I appreciate that, but I also want to talk about some things that you had to do outside of your faith and outside of your family, because I will say this, especially we in, in the church, we believe that, you know, it's just God for everything, but sometimes we have to take extra steps in order to make sure we're on the right track and we're doing what we need, what we're supposed to do. So with that in mind, what are some other strategies and what are some other steps that you had to take outside of faith and your family to keep you motivated and to help you to stay in a positive attitude? Um, well, here I, um, I took a two-year uh, counseling and mentoring course. Um, I studied leadership material from John Maxwell. I've taken uh, violence prevention, anger management, anger resolution, uh, these are just some of the tools that, that equip me with the necessary skills that, that I employ daily, um, which I'm currently looking for more correspondence, outside correspondence um, to be mailed in. But, but my, my, my motto is that the best investment that you can make is in your education. Wow. That education, you return all of that to your family and to others and to those that need your support, you know, like a bank account that you put in, it grows interest, and then that you're able to uh, receive that back out, you know. So investing in yourself, in your education, and in your mind, and then helping others with that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Some of the classes, some of the things that I took um, to prepare myself to be able to be used um, for God. That's awesome. That is awesome. And, and to tell the listeners what your model was again. I'm stealing that. <laughs> The, the best investment that you can make is in your education. And in that, because the, high, the highest investment you can invest is in your mind, mm-hmm. in your spirit, you know. And the, the greatest thing that God gave us is, is creation, our ability to live, to exist. Because like this time here that we're sharing with the listeners and the viewers, the, the, the most important thing you have is time because you can't buy time. That's right. And you can't get time back. So every moment that you live on this earth, cherish it because some person at this very moment has taken the last breath. Mm. And we still have hours. So, you know. That's right. That's right. Very, very encouraging and very uplifting. And and what I, I love about what you said, even with your model, the best investment that you can make is in your education. Um, you just didn't go there to serve your time and just twiddle your thumbs like some people would say, or just like, um, well, I'm going to be in here for so many years, so, you know, I'm just going to have a humdrum spirit, and, you know, I'm not going to do anything. But you actually attended classes, you did things, you educated yourself. So with the education, with educating yourself, what platforms or what opportunities was uh, made available to you just because you took the time to invest in educating yourself? Um, well, here, right now, I'm currently uh, serving as a facilitator um, in a program called the Step Down Program. And uh, it's a program that was created in the restrictive housing unit uh, stemming from a class action lawsuit settled by the state to provide better care to mental health and special needs uh, inmates. And it serves as a means to assist men that have been in solitary confinement for five, ten, and we have three over 20 years, the longest in SCDC ever. And it helps them to readjust back into the general population, you know, by providing multiple classes to grow and develop and to build relationships with others who have been through. I serve with a 
It looks like we are having a little bit of underline, okay? Let's see. There we go. All right, this is your girl Mo. We are back with Samuel Barber from Beyond the Bars. My voice matters. I hope you guys are enjoying um, listening in the, the information that gives us, the encouragement that he's giving us, even being beyond the bars. So welcome back everyone. Um, before our commercial break, Samuel was just telling us actually about the step down program that they actually have at his facility and he's actually a facilitator. So Sammy, what I wanted to know, um, it seems like this step down program is very instrumental in helping inmates. Um, I think this this program, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this program is actually for inmates that have to serve like over 10 years or something like that. Um, well, you have our lowest is five years and our longest is 21 years. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. So, but this 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 program. So this program is really just to kind of help them mentally and, and just kind of help their minds and help them to, to be more stable-minded as they're going through their time, basically? Absolutely. Okay. Um, a, lot of, a lot of the guys, the culture of prison has changed from the time how some of them were doing it, you know, 15 years ago, 10 years ago. Uh, grooming standards have changed. Dress okay. codes have changed. Even the culture with uh, inmates and employees has changed. So a lot of these guys who've been on lockup for uh, extensive amounts of time is really to uh, be uh, to readjust to the culture and the trends of today. And gotcha. that's really, it gives us an outlet, or gives them an outlet or a means to readjust into current today. What? Now see, now see, that's that's what I that's what I needed to hear. Um, and I actually, I actually work uh, for the South Carolina State Library as well. And um, one of our libraries in uh, our Richland Library, they are doing a program similar. It's not as extensive as the program at your facility, but that that's the the the, the missing piece. They don't. Uh, they actually work with some of the the men at the detention center, but for the men and women that have been in prison for many many years. They have that this that disconnect for for them trying to be prepared to enter into society again. So, how important is this program for inmates that have to transition from being in prison for many years to actually trying to be a productive citizen in in society? How? How instrumental is this program for, for inmates of, of that caliber? Well, it, it, it is very, very instrumental. You know, uh, classes are based on two parts. We have uh, learning uh, life skills and two, expressing yourself through writing. Mm-hmm. You know, and the, and the skills uh, part consists of the following. We have accountability, responsibility, authority, understanding your personality, characteristics, your strengths and weaknesses. Uh, learning how to handle your emotion, conflict, and stress in your life, and understanding your self-concept, uh, understanding constructive criticism, and setting goals in your life. Um, so it's very, very useful, not only on the inside, but also on the outside. You know, these, these are skills that we need in every day, in our everyday life. Yes. That's awesome. That is awesome. Um, because, and, you know, and, and I... When when I start hearing things like this, it just it really just pumps me up because I think so many times, especially when um, we, we look at inmates and and when they're trying to get out, especially family members and people in society, well, you just need to get a job, but they they don't understand what the inmates had to go through while they were in prison and how many life skills that they've kind of missed out on, and they're not prepared mentally. They, they don't know about the technology of 
today's society. They don't know what, what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to interact? How am I supposed to even get a job, you know? So we have unrealistic expectations of these inmates. We want them to be better citizens when they get out, but we don't give them the tools while they're in for to help them to be that, that better citizen when they get out and that they won't revert back to what actually got them in there in the first place. So I think that this step-down program is something that is needed um, in facilities across America. <laughs> um, so I wanted to ask you a quick question about the program. If other facilities, after um, um, listening to this broadcast on tonight, wanted information or wanted to um, see about um, implementing this program even in their own facilities, what information can you share to our viewers tonight about um, getting contact information about this program? Um, I, our director uh, in South Carolina prisons is uh, Mr. Mike McCall. Okay. And uh, Brian Sterling, they probably uh, they are the ones that that control each institution and the facilities that house the step down program. They would definitely have all the information needed to assist them at okay. that facility. Gotcha. All right, so we will definitely um, have to be providing that information for our viewers. Um, after we complete this um, this interview. So thank you so much for sharing information about that, um, Sammy, um, because this is definitely something that is needed and, and definitely something that's going to help um, our young men and our young women after they are able to come out of prison. So I thank you for that. Well, Sammy, we are actually getting to the eve of our interview on tonight. Um, but I just wanted to ask um, ask you to share, to share with our viewers or to leave them with a bit of advice. Um, what would you tell them to help them to be encouraged? It doesn't have to be um, an inmate. It could just be a anybody that may be going through a hard time or they, they're losing hope. They, they don't know what to do. They may not even know God. Okay, but well, what bit of advice would you give our listeners on tonight to encourage them to keep holding on? Well, first, um, I would say stop and evaluate um, what you have been seeing in your mind, mm. your body, and your spirit, because we're three part beings, and we have to look at what we have been allowed into our minds, into our spirits, and ultimately in our bodies. When you're feeling weak and you want to give up, you need to be recharged. That spirit yeah. needs to be recharged. The spirit powers the body. Just as the body can, can get weak, so can the spirit. Mm -hmm. You have to watch and read the people that they can do that and do that. And you're probably because you need an answer to the to give up. Sometimes you don't have to help you down.
we're limited to, you know, we're going to give the people a chance to, to hear you over the, the next few months. But, you know, you stay encouraged and continue to do what you're doing for those that are in your circle and those that you are reaching. So, again, I thank you for being a guest. were encouraged tonight. It looked like we, I think we had a little bit of technical difficulties, um, but I hope you guys were encouraged tonight with our special guest, Mr. Samuel Barber. Um, he is currently um, behind the bar, behind bars um, in McCormick County prison system, um, but like I was saying, he is, he has so much wisdom and even when I talk to him, he encourages me uh, for him to be so uplifted. Um, they, he, they're still working on his appeal. Um, he was sentenced to 55 years, and he's been in a little over 12 years now. But we are just believing God that, that his appeal is going to come through um, and that he will be released. Uh, but for the next few months, um, we're going to be doing some Facebook Lives with Mr. Samuel um, Barbara. He's going to be sharing some things with you guys um, about how prisoners can be educated and some things that they can do um, while they're behind the bar. So we're doing this to reach out to family members, um, to reach out to other people that may have um, family members that are locked up, but they need encouragement, they need tools, they need resources to help them along their journey and along their way. So um, Sammy said that we are destiny connectors, and we definitely are. And every time I hear his testimony and I hear him speak, I always think about Paul and Silas. Even when they were behind bars, even when they were locked up, they sung and they prayed, they sang praises, and they, they – they prayed unto God until the prison doors were loose and, and, and loose. So it doesn't matter where you may be or what you may be going through. We just want you to know that God is able. God is able to keep you encouraged. God is able to keep you with the joy of the Lord to do this segment because so many times, even us that we may not be locked up, but we are locked up in our mind. He talked about being unleashed in your mind and having your mind renewed and, you know, what you feed your mind and what you give your spirit and, and what you do. Those are the things that will help keep you lifted up. So we, so even beyond the, the bars, beyond whatever prison, what, beyond whatever thing that you're going through in your own life, God is still able. But you have to do some things. You have to feed yourself. You have to feed God. You have to feed your spirit the right things, the word of God. Be around positive people. You know, find the tools and find the gifts and abilities that God has given you. Just because he's locked up, that does not take away the giftings and the abilities that God gave him. And he channeled that energy. And now he's a facilitator where he's in this program that's helping other people to, 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 to find their purpose, helping other people to, to know what God has given them and called them to, to, to be. And I just thank God for him so much. He's a bright young man, very um, very young man, and I just know God has a bright future ahead of him. So I want you guys to be on the lookout for him. Um, look out for the those videos on Monday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, with Mr. Barber. We're going to go in. We're going to talk about different topics, different subjects. And I'm telling you, he is a wealth of knowledge. He has educated himself in law. He has educated himself in becoming his own business owner. So it's just a few tidbits and a few things that he will be sharing as we do those interviews. And just to know that even beyond the bars, even beyond what you may be doing or maybe going through, that God, if whatever God has in you, he will find a way for it to come out. Excited, um, excited about the Uplifted with Mo show. Um, we were supposed to have another special guest on tonight, Miss Viola Wingate. Uh, we were talking about the um, Vindicating Eve 
until um, something came up and she wasn't able to be on tonight. But we will definitely try to have her on um, within the next few weeks because it's all about freedom now, you guys. Oh, my God. And this it just dawned on me that we're talking about beyond the bars. But it's God has been talking to me and dealing with me about people being free, people being liberated. Amen? Being liberated. And it's not about your situations. It's about your mind. Hallelujah. Get free in your mind. I can't remember the school thing that's all free your mind. <laughs> but it is time for us to free our mind. And God has connected me to some awesome people that can tell you and that can demonstrate you to you the power of what God can do in freeing your mind, getting you out of your own personal prisons that we put ourselves into. So whew, I'm excited. That just rejuvenated me all over again. <laughs> But, I, again, you guys, this is your girl, Monique Walker. I enjoyed um, the show on tonight. Um, like I said, look forward to more interviews with Mr. Samuel Barber. Look forward to some more awesome things that we have coming down the pipeline. This is God is just so awesome, and he's moving in an awesome way. So, Father, we thank you for this evening, for your love. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your tender mercy. We thank you for all that you are and all that you are doing in the lives of your believers, Father God. God, we just honor you. We praise you, Lord God. God, we ask us tonight, Father God, God, someone that may be in their own personal jails, Father God, God, that something that will be that was said will free them, Father God, that will help them to look deeper than their situation, God, and find their purpose, Father God. Find their purpose, God, and allow them to know that you have not left them nor forsaken them, God, and you have something great in store and in mind for them, Lord God. God, we just ask that you to continue to bless this station, God. Continue to bless everyone that is a part of it, God, the people that we interview, Father God. God, we just ask, God, God, even as we're doing this, God, we ask that you help us to take it to the next level of excellence, God, in the name of Jesus. And, God, we just praise you. We give you glory and we give you honor in your son Jesus' name. Amen. You guys, this is your girl, Monique Walker. I am the host of the Uplifting with Mo Show. I will be back on next Saturday night. On uh, next Saturday night, uh, we have a special taping. <laughs> um, we do. We have a special taping of the man's code. This is our truth. Uh, it is going to be men speaking out. Yes, you guys are going to enjoy this. Men being vulnerable, men speaking out, men sharing their truth about what they think when it comes to love, relationship, and sex. So, yeah, I know that's something we don't really talk about in the church, but they are sharing their innermost thoughts on the subject. And I want you guys to tune in. Uh, I'm going to be uh, publicizing it and um, just promoting it. I want you guys to tune in because it is, it's, it's, it's powerful. It's going to be very powerful. So, again, this is your girl, Monique Walker. I hope you have a phenomenal, phenomenal Saturday evening, and we will talk to you soon. Good night. Brothers and sisters in the street, I'm here to let you know.
Where we meet. 